Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this is glow-in-the-dark clay. For all intents and purposes, it's pretty much identical to normal clay, but, you know, it, it glows in the dark. And if that's not the neatest heckin' thing you've ever seen, then, well, that's pretty fair, actually, though it is still pretty neat. This then begs the question, what should I do with this glow-in-the-dark clay? Of course, if you're here, then you probably saw the thumbnail and you read the title, so you probably got a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna do. At this point, I've built myself some irradiated bones and baked them so that I can start to build on top with more irradiated clay. Normally, I'd make the bones out of aluminium, but I wasn't sure if making the body clay the whole way through would help to increase the glow or not, but figured I'd give it a go regardless. So once I've wrapped my bones in more unsettlingly translucent clay, I can add some extra girth to the front and the back to make the face and the tail a bit thicker, then I'll cut a mouth into the front of the fish and hollow out his head. A bit of extra girthiness to his cheeks, throat, and gut will make him a bit bigger where it matters, and I can poke some tiny divots to add some tiny dots for his eyes. I mixed a bit of pink clay with the glow-in-the-dark stuff to give me a slightly pinkish glow-in-the-dark color that I can then fit into his face to build up the fleshy interior of his mouth into which I can start sticking some pre-baked glow-in-the-dark teeth. I decided at this point that maybe his eyes should glow in the dark too, so I'll pop them out and replace them with some appropriately glowy balls before moving on to making his front-facing sniffing holes and his back-facing breathing holes. One slight issue with this clay is that it's so incredibly soft that even the heat of my hands is causing it to deform slightly and my spooky shark is covered in fingerprints. To fix that, I'll slap a pair of blue nitrile gloves on which come pre-installed with some excellent dotted fingertip texture that I can replace the fingerprint texture with while I manhandle my sculpture. Then using a series of soft silicone shapers, I can add lots of little scars and scratches and bits of battle damage to the surface of my murder tube. Once he's been appropriately spookified with plenty of texture, I can throw him in the oven to bake his body and get to adding the various fins. The caudal fin can get fitted onto the chunky lump of a tail at the back and then smoothed into the existing body before getting cut and shaped the correct size. I can then add the second dorsal fin and the anal fin before adding the pelvic fins and... Well, I didn't add the clasper, so I guess he is actually a she. And she shall henceforth be known as Wendy. I'll then add her first dorsal fin, making sure all the fins are perfectly fitted to her body and appropriately scarred and scratched before finally adding her pectoral fins. These get the same treatment as the other fins and I can give her one final bake. Now I also gave her a very light brown wash to highlight all the scratches and scars and grooves and what have yous, but apparently at some point in the process I lost this footage because after I recorded this, I completely forgot about it and left it sitting on a shelf for a year and a half. No real reason, I I just forgot. So I guess if this video doesn't do well, I'm gonna retitle it with a super clickbaity title like, This video took me a year and a half to make. Otherwise, it's now April of 2024 and it's time to make a sewer. Now I want Wendy to be completely visible so the front of the sewer needs to be flat, but I want the back of the sewer to have a slightly curved wall, which I'm gonna make by cutting a section of this cardboard tube out. This curved back wall can then be attached to a flat sheet of MDF that I've cut to size and held in place with plenty of aluminium tape. I'll then build up the back of the wall to give me a little flat walkway that I can reinforce with a couple more strips of MDF and tape. Normally I just glue it in place, but I'm going to be making the bricks out of clay, so I need to make sure that it can go in the oven, and while I've never tried putting hot glue in the oven, something tells me it wouldn't work. As I said, I'm going to make my bricks out of clay, which means I need to take this block of Super Sculpey and make it a sheet of Super Sculpey. With the ensheetening accomplished, I can cut the side straight and fit it onto my fingerboard half pipe. However, much like celebrity couples, MDF and clay don't stick together, so I'm going to need to absolutely slather my half pipe in a healthy coating of bacon bond. With the bacon bonding achieved, I can reattach my clay sheet and cut any of the excess off. I'll add a final sheet to the walkway and cut that to size before getting on to building my bricks. I'll start by creating the horizontal lines of the bricks using a ruler to get me some semi-straight, semi-regular cross cuts, before using a variety of tools to try and make each of the vertical lines kinda bricky looking. This took a surprising amount of time since I had to keep going back over the bricks to get a nice, well-worn, rounded-edged finish. 
Finally, for some final finishing texture, I'll take a ball of scrunched up aluminium and run that over the entire surface. To make the back wall a bit less bland, I made some pipes of varying sizes that I can smoosh into the brickwork, and I also figured if it's an old dilapidated sewer system then some of these bricks will probably have come loose at some point, so I'm going to cut some sections of brick out and set those extra bricks aside for later. Now once I've baked my bricks, I'll glue the sewer to a thick piece of foam and trim the sides down using a hot wire cutter. I'm also going to make sure to cut the foam at a slight angle so it doesn't affect the resin mold when I add it later. This was definitely intentional and not a result of the wire being too loose and me making any mistakes. Shit. I can then fill the empty sections of the brickwork with some grainy wood filler to add some texture and seal any gaps then using some knives and sharp sculpting tools I can chop up the bricks to make them a little more battered and damaged. Then it's on to painting the bricks, which I'll do by painting the bricks with a brick colored paint. To add a tiny bit of barely noticeable variation in the color of the bricks, I'll haphazardly slap some slightly different shades of reds and terracottas on a handful of strategically selected bricks to break up the otherwise one-tone palette. Once the bricks have fully dried, I'll completely cover the entire surface in a mix of watered down white gesso and retarder. The watery gesso will flow nicely into all the gaps and grouting between the bricks, and the retarder will prevent it from drying too quickly, which is important since I want to wipe the majority of the white off the bricks before it's set. This adds grouting between the bricks and makes a nice weathered worn white top coat that I can easily tint using my favorite spray bottle of dirty brown wash. I'll spray an initial coat liberally over the entire base, then dab away the excess. Once that's dried, I can apply a second layer, though a bit less chaotically since I'm going to be leaving this as dirty weathering on the bricks and I don't want to flood the surface. Finally, while the wash is still wet, I'll wick some moldy green wash into the grout and let it flow where it wants. This will add a tiny bit of color and give my bricks a nice mossy moldy appearance. I'll then paint the blank sections of the tubes black before gluing them in place. The tubes themselves I painted with a gunmetal gray before gluing them in place and to make them fit the disused abandoned look I'll use a sponge to sponge some rusty looking paints all over the pipes. I baked and painted all those bricks that I cut out of the wall earlier so now I can glue them onto the bottom of the sewer to fill in some of the empty areas and make it look like maybe parts of the roof have started to fall down as well. Finally, for some final dirtying detritus, I'll toss some bits of dark brown sand around and between the bricks, brushing it in to fill all the cracks and gaps. To hold it all in place, I'll use some super thin CA glue. Now, normally I'd use a watered down PVA and alcohol combo, but time ever ticks onwards and I ain't got time to wait for PVA glue to dry, so I'm gonna take the chance and hope the CA glue doesn't react poorly with the future resin. After all, I've got such a good track record with resin pores, so what could go wrong? Otherwise, it's time to make some irradiated barrels. To make my barrels uniformly round, I'm going to wrap this dowel in a layer of clay. However, before I can do that, I need to cut it to length. Now to turn these casks into barrels, I'll wrap them in a thin layer of Super Sculpey, which, much like the sewer walls, needs a healthy layer of bacon bond to achieve. I'll then make some little sapili sushi rolls and wrap the rolls in a little wormy dealy of clay, then blend those worms in to make the barrel bumps, before gluing a pre-baked lid on top and a pre-baked bottom on the bottom. Then a couple aggressive shakes will turn my barrel from grey to white to yellow. Now with my barrels painted nice radioactive yellow, I can paint on the warning labels. Or you'll just have to believe that I did. Normally when I'm filming a video while I work on multiple things at the same time, I'll record the first time, then stop recording and slide the camera to the side so I can paint the other pieces without a camera in my face. This time, however, apparently I got confused and did the opposite, sliding the camera off to the side and recording nothing while I worked on the extra pieces off camera. And I feel like if that isn't a perfect highlight of the quality you can expect when you subscribe to North of the Border, then I don't know what is. But as you can see, I added some little danger signs in a radioactive label, then sprayed it with a high gloss varnish so I can slap a thick layer of brown wash over the whole barrel. Then before it's fully dried, I'll take a sponge and peel some of the wash off, leaving me with a gnarly stained barrel. A little steely metallic paint can get dabbed onto the edges for a bit of weathering, followed by a lot of rusty rust paint over top to add a ton of weathering. And with that, I've got a perfect little radioactive barrel that I'll recreate twice more. Of course, I'm gonna need some radioactive waste, which I'm gonna make out of some five minute epoxy. And to make sure it's appropriately radioactive, I've got this little bottle of no doubt cancer-inducing glow-in-the-dark pigment. 
I'll fill my little container with plenty of the epoxy, then stir it up and add a copious amount of my pigment, mixing it together until I've got a lovely little pot of green goo. I can then goop this green goop on the bottom of the brick base and fit one of my barrels into the goop, then the rest of the goop gets gooped onto the walkway and the other two barrels can get fit in place. Now, I originally wanted to make the radioactive goo with regular resin mixed into the watery resin, but I wasn't sure if it would just dissipate and turn the whole diorama into a green glow-in-the-dark mess, so instead I settled for a denser radioactive spill that sort of goops down and puddles on the bottom of the sewer. It's maybe a bit more cartoony than realistic, but it's a radioactive shark in a sewer, so realism isn't really the goal here. Otherwise, after 30 minutes, my 5-minute false advertisement resin is set and it's time to make my mold. I'm going to assume I haven't cut a perfectly straight line in the bricks, so to prevent any resin leaks, I'll start with a bead of silicone on the bottom and a bead of hot glue on the top, before fitting my various bits of perspex in place and filling the remainder of the gaps with hot glue. To hold Wendy in place while the resin sets, I've added some hot glue to the underside of this helping hand and stuck it onto the wall of the mold. Then Wendy's fin can fit into the hand and that should hold her in place without any need for supports. Now using the power of math, I figured out that I'll need 1.5 liters of resin, or for my British viewers, just under 3 Weatherspoons pints worth of resin. Now I want to tint the resin so it's murky and brown and gross, but I don't want Wendy and the radioactive waste to be hidden, so I'm going to go with a much more conservative mix of blue, green, and just a bit of red to brown it out. Also, Wendy and the radioactive waste is an incredible band name. Otherwise, I can pour my surprisingly clear and palatable looking sewer water into the mold and say a quick prayer to every god I know that it doesn't leak. After about 24 hours, the resin has reached a nice syrupy state, which is the ideal time to start pressing random bits of garbage into it. This is, after all, a sewer, so I've made little bits of plastic bags and cardboard boxes and some newspapers and some excellent little cans of coke that I made by wrapping dowel in aluminium tape and painting it red. I'll drop all these down on top, then press them in so they're suspended in the goopy, syrupy water. Finally, some leaves and detritus and bits of dirt to top it off, and I can come back a day later to add the little ripples on the top using some UV resin. Another 24 hours later and the resin is fully set, and I can pop the mold off. I'll then take a minute or two to admire what is somehow a resin pour with zero problems. I don't even know who I am anymore. Last but not least, I'll cover the sides in some foam I cut to size earlier to cover the ugly exposed bits and paint it black, and that's us done here and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to the fine folk over on Patreon that keep this channel running, and a special hey how are you to the newest of them, Peter Batty, Sammy Weeb, Saturn Star, Stephanie Hyman, Maya A, Rye of the Horde, Bridge T45, Dominic Casey, Gabs87, Callum Peeker, Jasmine Kazooie, Zero, Thundery Mud, Mysterious Construction, Bep Archivist, Firefly12, Nikolai Weiss, Evan Van Winkle, Atoki, Grom the Orc, ENV, Tuber, Jesse Spitzer, Tiberist, My Beetroot, Charlie Beal, Jesse, and Poosvert. You are the radioactive goo that powers this irradiated murder tube of a channel. If you want to see more projects like this, then make sure you take care of your eyes, because if you lose your eyes, you won't be able to see anything at all. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.